Good afternoon or good morning and welcome uh, to the intro to uh, the Certified Lighting Designer Program. Uh, my name is Joe DeGuzman, Senior Certification Coordinator for the CLD program. Before I introduce our speakers, I'd like to go over some housekeeping. Uh, attendees' uh, microphones will be muted for the duration of the session. If you have any questions anytime during the presentation, please type them into the questions box. Uh, in the heads up display on the right hand side, we'll take questions at the end of the presentation, but again, you can submit those questions at any time. Uh, with that, let me introduce you to our speakers. Uh, David Becker, Associate IALD. He's also a CLD. He's also the CLD Commission Chair from David Becker Design. Andrew Jakes, Professional IALD. He's also a CLD and he's from the Flaming Beacon. David, take it away. Thanks, Joe. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining this session. The purpose is to explain actually what CLD is all about. And I, I recognize that it's not a thrilling topic, but it's immensely important. And Andrew and I will do our very best to keep it short and engaging. And hopefully it, it will entice you to get engaged with the process. And uh, if you like what we have to say today, there's a follow-up webinar on the, um, on the 2nd of July next week and uh, you, we will take you through the process of actually doing an application. Uh, so why is CLD important? Well, all mature professions have a system of certification. It's a method of defining professional standard, and we're kidding ourselves if we think we can be different. Now, as it currently stands, anyone can say they're a lighting designer. There's absolutely no obligation to have any skill or any ability. All you need to do is get some business cards printers printed and say, I'm a lighting designer. And this, this basically says anyone can do it, therefore there's no skill. And so this is why certification is so, so terribly important. It seriously erodes our standing as a profession and will limit the ability of the profession to grow and have the respect that it deserves. Now, if we don't get to grip with defining competency within our own profession, like all other mature professions do. There's a real risk that others will try and define it for us. Uh, processes and restrictions could be imposed on the practice of architectural lighting design that, that don't suit the way that we work. And if this were to happen, we will not have any control over the outcome. So ILD recognized that if it didn't spearhead these efforts, there may be other organizations that seek to do it and to impose uh, restrictions over what we do. Now, I'm gonna hand over to Andrew now. He's going to talk a little, about, little bit about his experience. Thanks, David. Um, first, I wanted to, to congratulate the IALD for establishing the CLD. It's a fantastic and necessary initiative, and I'm proud to have qualified. For me, I had a growing concern that if we as the lighting design professionals don't fill the space of the so-called lighting expert, then it'll be filled for us by those whose interests are unlikely to align with our own. There's a lot of unknowns about how we as a profession will be regarded in the future, our place in, including our place in the project's uh, consulting team. We are often positioning ourselves somewhere between being part of the creative team and also part of the, of the technical team, in many ways not unlike the role of the architect. Not that long ago, lighting was simple and concerns such as climate change were not pressing factors they are today. Things have necessarily evolved since those days and are likely to continue to do so. One day soon, there may be need to define what a lighting expert is all number of reasons and this could affect the way that we do our job. For me it's important to be part of a group that can demonstrate capability across the many complexities that make for good lighting environments and for that group to be recognized as the most qualified to do so. I wanted to talk specifically about this idea of deserving a seat at the table. The table I'm talking about is the one shared with the lead consultants. I've spoken to many colleagues and peers and we all have stories about architects making our life difficult. This difficulty stems from a general lack of trust in our profession. During these lighting workshops, sometimes we win the lighting arguments, but sometimes as minor consultants, we lose. And sometimes we need to invest a lot of time 
to prove something we already know is, is in fact true. And the question is why? And I think the answer lies partly in our perceived level of expertise, as David has mentioned uh, earlier. Take, for example, the process it takes to become an, a registered architect in Australia in 2020. Graduating from high school with good, good grades, the architecture student embarks on a three-year undergraduate degree. This is followed by a gap year to experience working life in an architect's office. An extra year to travel overseas is encouraged, so the student gains first-hand experience wandering through significant international works of architecture, presumably in the hope that they will become well-rounded architects. On their return to study, they begin a two-year postgraduate study to achieve their master's in architecture. Now as a graduate, they must be able to demonstrate in a professional workplace competency across the many aspects of architectural practice. And finally, they must sit an exam with the architecture board, which I am reliably informed by my architecture friends, is not a walk in the park. Absolute minimum time from embarking on a career in architecture to being able to call yourself an architect is eight to 10 years. Calling yourself an architect is an achievement. Let's compare this to what is required to call yourself a lighting designer in 2020. It literally takes as long as being able to utter the words, I am a lighting designer. No wonder we don't automatically receive or deserve respect. Let's compare this to the process to call yourself a, a certified lighting designer in 2020. Probably you've completed an undergraduate study um, in the creative field, typically two to three years. You have then probably done your postgraduate studies in writing, which would take another one to two years. You would then find employment and work your way up to a lead role, at least one year, and probably many, many more. Certainly in our practice, it would be unusual to be in a lead role in less than two or three years. And finally, uh, sorry, and having obtained this level of uh, this lead, uh, sorry, having obtained the lead role on projects, you'll need to cover a diversity of projects over a minimum of three years until finally you're able to apply for certification. This process to, to achieve CLD typically takes eight to 10 years, much like that for an architect to become registered and call themselves an architect. So one of the reasons I decided to call myself, I decided to get CLD, is to know demonstrably that I deserve to be at that table as an equal. I encourage everybody eligible to become certified. The more of us, the better. I'm now gonna hand you back to David. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks very much. So IALD has funded a certification program designed by lighting designers for lighting designers. Now, the point of this webinar is really to try and demystify what it is. It's a portfolio-based assessment. In fact, it's the first international portfolio-based credential for lighting designers in the world. And it's intended to align the lighting design with the same competency standards as our project colleagues work to, much as Andrew has just gone through. Why do it? Well, our profession of architectural line design has matured to a point where it needs to abide by the competency standards expected of all mature professions. Uh, legitimacy, it, it legitimizes our industry by making it comply to the same standards as other professions. Uh, there's the risk of interference that I've touched on. It minimizes the risk of regulation being imposed on us from, from the outside. Um, it informs clients and the public, uh, it builds trust with them, and it provides distinction to designers who have achieved certification. So what is certification? Well, it's not a license. Licenses are typically territorially based and they restrict whether you can practice a trade or not. <clears throat> you cannot, for instance, be an electrician without a license. This is the sort of restriction that an outside authority could impose upon us if we persist without certification. 
it's not a test. CLD is not a test. There's nothing to revise for. And similarly, it's not an exam. It most certainly is not an award submission. Uh, many people, a good many people, have said that they'll apply when they've got enough award-winning projects. That's completely irrelevant for a CLD application. CLD is not an, uh, an association. Now, whilst, whilst ILD funds CLD, cert the certification program, uh, that's the extent of it. Achieving CLD does not mean that you are a member of ILD or any other organization. What it is, though, is a competency assessment. It's an independent measurement of competency against standardized criteria. It shows that you've been independently assessed and you've demonstrated the standards expected of a competent professional lighting designer. So, a certified light designer is someone who's been independently measured against a standard set of global best industry practices and principles. Someone who has attained CLD has shown through their work, through the portfolio of their work, that they satisfy the standards and principles that define what it is to be an architectural lighting designer. Now, who, who benefits? Well, Designers definitely benefit because it establishes a standard and this raises the awareness of our profession. And there's a quote on the, on the right of this slide that you can read, and it's from Denise Fong, who says that her benefit is that CLD sets you apart from your competition. Uh, our clients and general public also benefit from the credibility that a credential brings because it builds trust in our profession. Uh, Jenny Gillard, uh, a local, well, local if you live in Australia, local uh, life designer says that uh, her clients are engaged. She likes it because her, she feels her clients are engaging with a professional of the highest standard, which in turn builds confidence for her. So, who is eligible? Uh, well, CLD is specifically for architectural lighting designers. Uh, it's for a senior designer who has practiced at a senior level for at least three years. The applicant must have sufficient portfolio examples to illustrate responses to questions. Uh, this means that you've got to have a minimum of two projects and a maximum of Four. Now, if you've been a senior light designer for three years, having two or four, pro up to four projects isn't going to be a problem. So how does the assessment work? Well, light designers have to answer some questions and support their answers with examples of their work. The questions all relate to a set of domains. And the domains are essentially uh, areas of, of ability. These domains were developed through extensive research and industry consultations, and they evolved, they evolved to define what is required to be considered a competent architectural lighting designer. But these are the, this is the domains here. As you can see, there are seven of them, and I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but they are all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, um, you have to demonstrate that you delivered the outcome or the goal of the, that you promise your clients. Domain two uh, is uh, a way of you have to show that you collaborated, et cetera, et cetera. They provide a standard for measuring the performance of CLD candidates, and applicants have to answer questions and show examples of their work against each domain. The CLD application is done entirely online. Now, Joe, who introduced uh, this webinar, it will be there as support, and he's somebody that you can contact if you have any difficulty with the online tool, but it's pretty straightforward. Each domain has between two and three questions, and you'll have to answer the question within 300 words. The questions are they're all published in a handbook. It's a very nice little document like this. There, there's no surprises. Uh, you can read the questions 
today and and uh, gather your thoughts and, and uh, respond to them uh, all in good time. You have to use examples from your portfolio to support your written responses. There's a minimum, there's a maximum number of images that you can use to illustrate each written uh, answer. You can use, as I said, between two and four projects to support your answers, and projects must be from uh, at least two different types of work. For example, you can't just show residential work or just retail, you have to show another type of, of project. And, it, and the work must show interior and exterior experience, but it's not necessary to show both in each domain. You just have to show interior and exterior once. And you must submit a letter from your client or from somebody else in authority to show that you were the senior lighting designer on the projects that you, you've used. Once you've completed your application, professional members of the ILD and other approved lighting design associations pay a reduced fee of 525 US dollars and all others pay 600. $25. Now that's a, a one-off fee for certification. The, beyond that, uh, as with every uh, with every certification program, you must recertify every so often. And with CLD, it's every five years, which, which is pretty typical. Recertification requires you to undertake at least 70 hours of professional development during the course of the next five years. So through your for a five year period, you have to acquire 70 hours of uh, professional input and the handbook explains what constitutes professional development. For example, attending a seminar for one hour will provide one hour towards your recertification and you need 70 of them in total gathered over five years. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. That, concludes this overview and um, would be very pleased to take any questions and as I said at the beginning if if this excites you perhaps not the the, the, the right word but if if this interests you uh, please join the webinar webinar next next week on uh, on the 2nd of July and um, I think you'll find it very helpful to be taken through the process in a workshop kind of environment. Joe, I'll hand back to you and, and then Andrew and I will answer any questions. Thank you, David. Um, David did mention the handbook. Uh, if you look in your control panel on the right-hand side in the handout section, I've linked the handbook there. It will open up in a web browser, so you'll have access to that. Uh, you can print it from there. You can just save that link. You'll always have it. Uh, I also shared a link to register for our next webinar in the questions box. So if you go to the questions box, where uh, you can still submit questions. We do have a couple, but uh, feel free to keep adding more. Um, you can go ahead and that will open up a link to register for the next webinar as well. Uh, but let's get on to questions. Uh, this one is for David. What happens if my answers fail to answer, oh, I'm sorry, what happens if I fail uh, my application? Uh, well, fails, uh, that's a harsh word, isn't it? Um, if, uh, if all, all applications are reviewed by your peers and uh, they're reviewed by three peers, uh, three light designers. They don't know you and they don't know each other. Two out of the three reviewers have to pass you in every domain. If you fail to uh, to meet that, if, if you don't achieve that, uh, that level of pass, uh, we give you the opportunity to, to resubmit. We'll tell you where you uh, fall short and you have an opportunity then to review your application and resubmit it. Okay. Uh, this one is for Andrew. How long did it take you to complete your application and how did you find the application process? And how did you, how did you find the experience of your application process? Yeah. Um, it took me probably longer than it should have. I, I started it when I first heard about CLD and um, things happened and I forgot about it for a while. And then I attended a, um, a, a seminar with, uh, with David and another David, David Bird in Australia. And they um, reminded me of not only the importance of becoming CLD, but also the, um, 
how it wasn't as difficult to fill out as I first thought. And what I, what I, one of the things that I realized I had to do quite early on was to uh, establish the necessary exhibits. Once I worked out the exhibits which would accompany the answers to the questions, actually it became quite an easy process. And uh, I did most of it offline. Um, and when I, once I'd established the exhibits, it, it took me less than a day to, to complete. Can I add to that, um, Joe? I, sure. um, I've been involved in this process for a long time. Uh, but even so, I was not the first cab off the rank when it came to releasing uh, the, the, the CLD. I wasn't, the, I wasn't certification, certified line designer number one. Because it is a bit, you know, it's, it's time, you know, you, we, we're all pushed for time. I actually found it very helpful when I thought to myself eventually, well, there are seven domains for seven days in a week. I'm just going to do one a night. And once I sort of latched onto that idea, it, it was very straightforward and very simple and and i would say that it's an hour and a half per domain something like that uh and i, I just uh add to my previous uh, uh comment about uh, what if you if you don't pass you get the opportunity to to resubmit uh based on some of the feedback from the reviewers if on that resubmission uh you don't pass all seven domains then you would have to resubmit again, and that would be a, a, a new application. And you can do that at any time, but you do get this uh, one opportunity to, to review your submission um, once, uh, you know, should you not meet the, uh, the standards that the reviewers think you should. Okay, uh, the next question I can actually cover. Uh, after we apply, how long, uh, how long do we have to finish the submission? Um, you have, once you start an application online, you have six months to complete your submission. Um, however, that doesn't mean that you can't start working on your application prior to starting your application online. Uh, you have access to the handbook. The questions are in the handbook. So even before you start an online application, you can go ahead and copy those questions down uh, from the digital to maybe a Word document and then work on it offline. Um, we have heard uh, some people suggest that, and by all means, that is a good way to you know, kind of get your start. Uh, it is a little daunting to sit in front of a computer screen, reading a question for the very first time, trying to figure out what your answer is going to be. So working on it offline is uh, you know, highly suggested. You can get feedback right away from any other colleagues or anybody else if you have any questions without having to worry about sitting on the web page um, and, and trying to figure out what your answers are. Uh, but once you do start the application and you sign up for an account uh, at our website, cld.global, you will have six months to complete that submission. I would, I would add to that that it, it's really worthwhile reading the, the, um, the handbook and thinking, spending some time at the beginning, just planning the projects you're going to use. Look at the questions and you've only got between two and four projects to use. Think hard about which are the best projects that answer those those questions, and invest the time up front uh, doing that. And I think you'll you'll find it, it it makes things much easier. Right, and then what you can add up. to that, David. Oh, what, sure. One thing, okay. add, uh, one thing I could add to that is that the um, as you said earlier in the presentation, David, um, one of the things that was holding me back originally was to try to find high enough quality exhibits. Um, but once once it became clear that it, was, it, it, it wasn't it was award-winning entries that one had to find, it, the process became a lot easier. Yes, yeah, that, actually, yeah. that actually leads me into the next question. Um, but before we get into the next question, um, David did say, you know, the handbook, reading the handbook is very important, but we did create a handbook supplement, which is, as it is, as it sounds, it's a supplement to the handbook, um, where based on feedback from reviewers, uh, it's it shows the questions and what the reviewers are looking for in each question. You can find this on our uh, CLD.global website under what's new. There's a section that says download the 2019 CLD candidate handbook supplement. Uh, I can also link that in the ch uh, questions and chat function just so you guys can access that too. 
But while I do that, let me ask the next question, which is how do I know, uh, this is for David, how do I know if my projects are good enough? That kind of goes uh, hand in hand with what Andrew was talking about. So if you can go ahead and say, how do I know, answer, how do I know if my projects are good enough? Well, your projects are good enough if they answer the question. Um, let me just uh, quickly, if you will bear with me, let me just look, give you an example of that. Um, explain the design, this is, this is domain number one, question number one, explain the design concept and the project requirements, including client requirements, constraints, and any other project considerations. And to answer that, to answer that question, you just need to have a, a project that shows what you promised the client beginning and what you delivered at the end. It doesn't have to be groundbreaking or award-winning or anything like that. Your project just simply has to be able to demonstrate or answer the question um, and support your, your written answer. Uh, Joe, I think it'd be worth, could you just talk briefly about the mentor program because people might find that useful. Sure. Yeah, um, when you when you um, sign up for an application, you get an automated email from um, the, the system. But there is a way, you, you can always contact me at joseph at cld.global. My email is on the website as well. Um, or even info at cld.global and I get those emails too. Uh, if you're looking for someone to kind of help mentor you or coach you through the process, if you want to bounce off questions, um, especially if they're lighting related, um, I can't help you with that because I'm not a lighting designer, but uh, we can match you up with uh, a CLD, hopefully that's at least somewhere near your time zone, um, that you can bounce ideas off of or bounce, um, you know, uh, thoughts on or you know feedback on exhibits things like that and these are these people who have gone through the cld process um so they've gone through the same thing that you're going through uh and so they can relate and they can help you by no means are they going to help you uh with you know with your answers and responses but they can all they can give you feedback on some of the, some of those mm -hmm. things um we, we found a great success with that uh it's always good to kind of have some teamwork and have someone to lean on. You know, you're, you're not alone in the process. Uh, I am there for technical support, but we can offer, uh, if you ask for a mentor, we'll, we'll try to our, our best to match you up with someone um, that can help you through um, the support of getting your application, application completed. Yeah, we can't do it for you, but we can, we can, um, we can answer any queries that you might have about what what interpretations uh, you might have made about the about the question things like that right i do have one more question um while we're while we're going through uh, i'm also adding some links to the questions chat so uh the questions function so you will see some of those links there i know maybe some people did not see the handout so i'm going to link the uh handbook in the um in the questions box too um i'll do that while david answers this question I am an engineer. I work on HCL projects, LEED, L-E-E-D projects, industrial projects. Can I apply for the CLD? I think we'll probably need some more information on that, um, but David, you can kind of clear up a little bit. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, the, it, the handbook actually has a section on who's eligible. We've, we've touched a little bit about it, but if you have performed as a, a, in a LEED role on lighting projects, for more than three years, and you have a body of work that can uh, support uh, your answer to the seven domains, I would say that that's, uh, you You certainly would be able to. But if you want to talk to Andrew or myself after this and and, and um, give us a, a, a better idea of what it is you, you do, um, I, I'd be very happy to, to um, input further. But I would say at face value, uh, a CLD is is for you. Okay, um, that's it for the questions. But I will give another plug for our next webinar on two July. Um, it's going to be talking about organizing uh, and applying for the application online. We're actually going to go through. Um, some different techniques that people have used to organize themselves. Um, well, we're going to share a template that David created to kind of track uh, 
which projects he's using for which domain, so he knows that uh, which ones are going to be used uh, in his responses. Uh, we're also going to show you what the application looks like online and fill one out. Um, obviously, um, it's not going to be someone's real application. It, it's going to have some uh, some old answers from someone that has already gone through the CLD process. So she's just going to show you how she entered them in or how she worked on them. Um, but yeah, please join us for that. I, I've linked that. I believe I linked that in the um, in the questions below. Otherwise, you can find that on our website uh, or even on ILD's website under their webinar section. You can find that there. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank David and Andrew for uh, joining. And, and doing this um, session for us. And uh, thank you to the attendees for taking the time, uh, your morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you're at <laughs> for some of us. Uh, uh, thank you. And if again, if you have any questions, email us at info at cld.global or even myself, Joseph, J-O-S-E-P-H at cld.global. And we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you again, David and Andrew and our attendees. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thanks for attending. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.